there was a man who ruled the state of Tamil Nadu for three consecutive terms and was an active MP when he died, he just had 130 rupees as his asset. But even this man, a freedom fighter, an honest politician who dedicated all his life for the well-being of people, got defeated by his own people. Don't you think his story should be heard? Kamaraja lost his father when he was just six years old. His mother managed to send him to school for a few years, but the financial condition of the family was so poor, he had to discontinue his studies to support his mother. While working in his uncle's shop, he developed interest in politics by reading newspapers daily. But we all need a turning point in our life to take that big decision right. He had a turning point too. That was the Jolyan Wallabak massacre which shook the entire nation at that time. That moment, he decided to quit everything and fight for the national freedom. And he was just 18 years old when he joined Congress as a full-time political worker. And he had an opportunity to meet Mahatma Gandhi during his visit to Madurai. And things started getting really really serious from there. He was imprisoned six times by the Britishers for his involvement in the freedom movement. During the Second World War time, the British were collecting war funds from the Indian people. Kamaraja did a vigorous campaign all over the Tamil Nadu as the people not to contribute to the war funds. And for this reason, he was again arrested and jailed for nine months. And the most surprising part is, he was elected as a municipal councillor but he was in jail. When he came out 9 months later, the first thing he did was resign from the councillor post. When asked for the reason, he said he could not do justice to the post as he was in jail and one should not accept any post to which one could not do full justice to. As I said earlier, Kamaraja was arrested six times by the Britishers and he spent more than 3000 days in prison and that is over 8 years in jail. And this part of his life as a freedom fighter went unnoticed by many people unfortunately. Most of the people who know him, even the Tamil people, do not know he actively participated in the freedom movement. By the time we got independence, he became an inevitable politician of Tamil Nadu. He took charge as the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu in 1954 and the things he did as a Chief Minister, I don't think anyone would have done that in the whole India. And the first thing he did was the removal of Kulakal Vithitam, that is the hereditary based education system. He reopened 6,000 schools which was closed by the previous government due to insufficient funds. And he did not stop just at that. He opened 12,000 more schools so that the students no need to work more than 3 kilometers to their nearest school and he made sure that there is no village without a primary school and no panchayat without a high school and education was made compulsory and free up to 11th standard in all over the Tamil Nadu. Even though there were a lot of schools, the children were not showing up. The kids chose to go to work rather than going to school. See, it was not like the time today. We just got independence and the country was in a very poor condition. People could hardly fill their stomach. So obviously they gonna prefer making money rather than education. Kamaraja realized this and made an iconic scheme which changed the course of education not just in Tamil Nadu but all over the India. That is the midday meal scheme which provides at least one meal per day to all the children who are studying in school. And as expected, the parents started putting their kids in school just for food. During the British period, the education rate of Tamil Nadu was just 7%. After Kamaraja, it reached 37% and that was within 10 years. He remained the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu for three consecutive terms, winning elections in 1957 and in 1962. After 62's election, he started noticing that the Congress party was slowly losing its strength. And he made a plan which is never ever in the history of India any politician would even think of. And that is popularly known as K plan, which means Kamaraja's plan. According to this plan, the elder leaders of the party should resign their post and concentrate on strengthening the party and the youngsters should take up the higher positions and lead the country. On Gandhi Jayanti Day 1963, he resigned from the post of the chief minister and proposed all senior congress leaders to resign their post and concentrate on strengthening the party. Following him, many senior leaders like Lal Bahadur Shastri, S.K. Patel, Maharaji Desai resigned their post and within a week of his resignation, he was elected as the President of Indian National Congress on 9th October 1963. And within few months, Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru died. That was a very crucial time for the nation as well as for the party. Since Kamaraja was the President of the party, he had all the means to become the Prime Minister as well. But he refused to do so and made Lal Bahadur Shastri as the Prime Minister. Unfortunately, Shastriji also died in two years and now he recommended Nehruji's daughter Indra Gandhi as the Prime Minister and for this role, he was popularly known as the Kingmaker at that time.
But it was very evident that later he badly regretted for recommending Indira Gandhi as the Prime Minister. Their relationship was very strained. Because of this conflict, he quit from the national politics and started concentrating only on Tamil Nadu politics. He was the one who strongly opposed when many freedom fighters got arrested by the Indira Gandhi government during the emergency time. As we all know, honest people suffer the most. The opposition party in Tamil Nadu repeatedly accused him of fraudulence and corruption. As a result of this, he got defeated in his own constituency in 1967. But today, the same party is saying that they will give Kamaraja school in their election campaigns. When he was a chief minister, the municipality gave a direct water connection to his hometown house where his mother was staying. When he came to know about this, he ordered it to be disconnected immediately and he refused to use the asset level security and was travelling with just one police vehicle as a chief minister. He did not marry, did not own any property, resigned from the CM post as it meant nothing for him. Just imagine, he was the CM for 10 years and when he died, he just had 130 rupees. He had no house, he had no property, he had nothing and he was an active minister when he died. This man dedicated all his life to the well-being of people. Don't you think his story should be remembered forever?